افريقيا وجميع انحاء العالم اصحاب المعالي ان القاره تواجه تحديات عديده لا سيما فضلا عن التهديدات التي تواجه السلم والامن مثل النزاعات المسلحه الارهاب الجريمه العابره للحدود ونزوح القصريه تغير المناخ ومع ذلك توافر العوامل الرئيسيه لتحقيق الازدهار والتنميه الاقتصاديه والبشريه في القاره الافريقيه مثل امتلاكها للثروات الطبيعيه واعتبارها سوقا كبيرا وواعدا للاقتصاد وللاستثمار وتحقيق الاندماج الاقليمي بين دول القاره والشرق integration between different countries in the continent in addition to the potentials of the african youth that are considered to be half its population the second session of the forum aims at developing a promising ambitious agenda for the african continent through the aware leadership and innovative solutions as well as better reconstruction in the continent your excellences ladies and gentlemen to start the inauguration formally let us welcome the foreign minister of egypt mr samah shukri to deliver his speech In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, ladies and gentlemen. Egypt, uh, that is so proud of belonging to Africa, believes in the importance of joint African action. And it is Egypt that has supported historically all the independence movements in our mother continent. And it is the same Egypt that realizes that a new phase of renaissance and construction needs to start for the interest of the nations and the countries of this continent that are giving a lot to its people. Encouraging them to construct and build and achieve uh, the international position it deserves with all its rich natural resources and its people that's looking forward to its legitimate right to development and prosperity. To achieve this objective, Egypt is contributing with strenuous efforts to achieve stability and peace in the African continent as a pillar to development in this context. I'm glad to share with you the inauguration of the second session for Aswan Forum for Peace and Development that comes to emphasize uh, Egypt's belief in uh, going on supporting uh, the African cooperation and integration, especially in light of the extraordinary conditions the whole world is facing. I here would like to express the appreciation of the Forum and its gratitude to the keenness of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi to give a speech uh, recorded for uh, the African leaders and the heads of states in addition to all the participants in this forum to reflect uh, the Egyptian political strong will to support uh, the conditions in Africa through the African frameworks. The status of instability witnessed by the whole world right now due to the pandemic COVID-19 imposes on all of us to put before our eyes how to confront such a pandemic and its adverse effects economically and socially. And this made us make a decision that the second edition of Aswan Forum would focus on how to deal with such a challenge. Consequently, the title of the second edition of the forum is drafting a vision for the new African reality towards better, stronger recovery and better construction. And this reflects the fact that we won't stop at the adverse effect of this pandemic, but we would rather focus on innovative solutions to overcome them and find how how can we achieve recovery to achieve uh, the agenda of the African Union 2063 and the Sustainable Development Goals Agenda for the year 2030? Ladies and gentlemen, 
pandemic COVID-19 comes with unprecedented challenges that need reconsidering the concept of peace and security, and it contributed in the meantime to aggravating the conventional challenges facing the African continent, like the armed conflict, as well as the, the increase of the role of terrorist groups, forced displacement, difficult social and economic conditions through which the African continent is passing through. And all these developments need uh, enhancing the capabilities of the African countries to confront the current security challenges, on top of which is confronting the phenomenon of terrorists and foreign fighters, as well as preventing the illegitimate flow of weapons and arms with the increase of organized transnational crimes, in a way that would make the African initiative for silencing the arms a success. I would like to emphasize the role that that the African Union Center for Reconstruction and Development would play in the post-conflict era as it would lead the construction efforts to prevent uh, the renewal of conflicts and disputes in light of uh, the responsibility shouldered by Egypt and its leadership to support uh, the process of capacity building and mediation and settling peacefully the disputes. The second edition of Aswan Forum over five days give a good opportunity to discuss uh, this difficulty through a number of sessions on the development of uh, peace building process and the prevention of conflicts as well as efforts uh, to fight terrorism in addition to supporting the agenda of women, peace and security and dealing with displacement because of conflicts. All these topics would be covered in light of the additional challenges imposed by the pandemic on Africa as well as working on coming up with specific recommendations that would contribute to the African response to all these challenges challenges. In addition to all these topics, uh, the discussions of the second edition of the forum would discuss uh, top priority issues for the African continent that were not covered before during the first edition of the forum like climate change. In light of uh, the influence of this phenomenon on peace and security as well as culture, heritage and art, as a main topic for the African Union for this year and this enjoys great importance in the framework of our heritage and African identity as well as diversifying artistic and cultural fields as a kind of confronting extremism and terrorism and this would enhance peace and security in the African continent. Also, the second session would discuss a number of fields that would create an enabling environment to stabilize peace and security, like uh, supporting pan-African trade in light of launching the African continental free trade zone in 2021 and the infrastructure projects in addition to electing Egypt to preside over the peace building committee in the Af UN and Egypt through this would uh, support peace building efforts in UN as well as reconstruction in the African continent. The first edition of Aswan Forum that was hosted by Egypt in December 2019 when it was the president of the African Union thanks uh, to that effort they uh, supported and launched uh, a platform for supporting stability and security and peace and uh, rich discussions took place resulting to a number of outcomes we are trying to build upon during the second edition of the forum one of which is the importance of uh, replacing uh, dispute uh, settling short-term processes through sustainable stability, peace and security as well as long-term solutions that deal with the root causes of the crises. All these outcomes uh, were uh, greatly welcomed by all international forum and supported the vision of the African continent towards uh, development, peace and security. As what happened in the first edition of the forum, the second edition of the forum would hold a number of preparatory uh, sessions regarding these topics and they resulted in a number of recommendations and outcomes that would contribute to supporting the sessions of this forum and they were included in Aswan's forum for peace and development that was published on uh, the website of the forum. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend deep thanks and appreciation to all the partners who were keen on supporting the forum 
them uh, through different forms of support, be it countries or international and regional organizations or the private sector or the research centers. At the end, I would like to reemphasize the keenness of Egypt uh, to support cooperation between its African brothers and its international partners due to the principle of international cooperation and the regional belonging so that the countries in the region would achieve the aspirations of its peoples. Thank you for due listening and I wish that the second edition of Aswan Forum for Sustainable Peace and Development be crowned with success. Thank you and peace be upon you. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Foreign Minister of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Mr. Sameh Shukri. We are so glad to have with us the Minister of Planning and Economic Development, Dr. Rahela, and Mr. Amr Musa. He is here with us. Thank you for being here with us in the second edition of Aswan Forum. And now we'll move on to the presidential session during which we would receive messages recorded by President Abdel Fattah Sisi, the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, as well as speeches from different leaders and presidents of the African countries regarding the topic of means of recovery from pandemic COVID-19 to enhance sustainable peace and development in Africa. Your Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, we'll watch now the recorded speech of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi, the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, your excellences, heads of states and African governments, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. I'm glad at the beginning of my speech to welcome you all in the second edition of Aswan Forum for Sustainable Peace and Development. This African interactive platform that we launched together while Egypt presided over the African Union in the year 2019 to give momentum to an ambitious agenda that works on creating stronger relations between peace, security and sustainable development in our African continent as well as enhancing cooperation between our countries and our partners. The pandemic COVID-19 has imposed on us different challenges and we are unable now to meet face to face in Aswan as we did last year. Yet Egypt was so keen on holding the second edition of Aswan Forum in a virtual manner to build upon the momentum that was created by the first edition and all its successes. And due to Egypt's belief that uh, this moment is the suitable moment to discuss together the grave challenges facing our continent and to discuss the best means and uh, mechanisms to support our joint efforts for recovery from the pandemic reconstruction in a better manner to take our continent out of uh, this crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, we have proved during the past year that the challenges imposed on us by the pandemic and its repercussions won't stop us working on our African agenda, but it increases our persistence to go on implementing our plans for reconstruction in a better manner to achieve uh, the goals of uh, the African Union and the Agenda 2063, enhancing the African trade agreement by the beginning of this year is the best example of the success of our collective efforts. And here I would like to re-emphasize Egypt's full support to this agenda and the importance of accelerating the implementation of the negotiation phases as well as enforcing its policies. 
The infrastructure projects are considered to be a main pillar for the efforts of recovery and development in Africa. So we are now in a dire need for ambitious projects like transportation, roads, as well as electricity connectivity to enhance economic integration we are aspiring to. In addition to creating an enabling environment to achieve higher levels of development and growth, in addition to creating job opportunities in a way that would enable us to overcome the repercussions of the pandemic. Egypt's pioneer experience in the field of infrastructure projects is an example we are ready and glad to share with our brothers in Africa. I would like also to highlight the importance of information technology in dealing with the repercussions of the pandemic and its pivotal role in all aspects of our lives. And this uh, confirms the importance of increasing investments in the field of digitization in Africa to maximize the benefit from opportunities uh, this technology creates in different fields. Full recovery from the pandemic necessitates developing uh, sustainable development policies, including social, economic, environmental aspects, as the pandemic showed how the challenges and difficulties facing our countries and our communities are overlapping. I'm confident that the discussions of this forum would create a suitable environment for sharing experiences and opinions regarding developing these policies. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to to uh, the burdens shouldered by our countries due to the pandemic, Africa is still suffering from armed conflicts, civil wars that threatens the sustainability of peace and stability in the continent. And terrorism is trying to undermine the stability of our peoples in addition to the cross-border phenomena like the spread of weapons and smuggling arms and weapons as well as organized crime uh, trafficking in persons, uh, forced displacement and migration. The pandemic with all its repercussions, be it economic or social, led to aggravating these dangers and this necessitates uniting our efforts to support the African frameworks and mechanisms to settle and prevent uh, conflicts and build the capacities of the African countries to deal with the existing challenges and threats in addition to the importance of focusing on the role of women in the agenda of peace and security and investing in a preventive approach for crises and supporting the relation between different actors in the field of peace, development and security in a way that would contribute to dealing with the root causes of conflicts. In this context, I would like to re-emphasize the importance of selecting heritage, art uh, and culture as the topic for the African Union for the year 2020 as the soft power for rapprochement between peoples and as a means to deal in an enlightened manner with the conflicts up to the heritage and the culture of our peoples and in a way that would enhance peace and development in our great continent. Achieving sustainable peace necessitate the countries getting out of conflicts to be supported through building the power of their institutions for resilience and enabling them to play their roles and give momentum to development. In this context, we emphasize the fact that we would shoulder our responsibility regarding supporting reconstruction in post-conflict eras through supporting the African Union Center for this issue that is located here in Egypt to develop the development plans in coordination with all the relevant countries according to their priorities and national conditions, as well as discussing the best mechanisms and means to improve implement them on the ground. And the fact that Egypt presides over the Peace Building Committee affiliate to the UN opens the door to enhance cooperation between the African Union and the United Nations in this field. Your Excellences, heads of states and governments in Africa, ladies and gentlemen, in these extraordinary conditions our world is witnessing today in light of the spread of the 
the pandemic, Egypt emphasizes the fact that international solidarity is a need so that humanity would get out of this crisis in peace and security and safely. Despite our regional and international efforts to confront this pandemic, the current phase came with new challenges, on top of which is providing the vaccine needed for our peoples. And here I would like to emphasize that the African request to provide the vaccines in a just manner to meet the needs of the peoples of our African continent is a must. Ladies and gentlemen, I wrap up my speech wishing to meet you face to face soon after uh, closing this chapter of the pandemic so that we can hold the next edition of Aswan Forum face to face in Aswan, the land of history and civilization. Thank you for your due listening and peace be upon you. And now we uh, will broadcast uh, recorded messages from the heads of states and governments regarding the same topic of this session. And let me introduce to you the presidents uh, who would speak during this session. The president of Rwanda, the president of Senegal. His Excellency President of Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency President of Republic of Madagascar, His Excellency President Republic of Guinea-Bissau, His Excellency President Republic of Burundi. Excellency President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me first congratulate President Sisi and the government of Egypt for convening the second edition of the Aswan Forum, despite the global situation. This forum, which was initiated under Egypt's successful chairmanship of the African Union, exemplifies Egypt's commitment to African integration. The theme of this year's forum is recovering stronger and building better from the COVID-19 pandemic. No topic is more urgent for Africa let the critical importance of increasing domestic health financing on our continent. National health systems have been the backbone of pandemic response on our continent. As I highlighted in my last report to the African Union as the champion for domestic health financing, tools are available to help governments not only spend more, but spend better. Second, Africa's continental health institution, the Africa CDC, has proven its value during this pandemic. It has helped secure and distribute test kits and protective equipment, collected epidemiological data, and supported the collective procurement of supplies and vaccines. We must further strengthen Africa CDC to ensure its autonomy and effectiveness. I also urge member states to sign and ratify the African Medicines Agency Treaty so that it comes into force as soon as possible. Third, we must double down on implementation of the continental free trade area as the key strategy for rebuilding better. In that context, creating robust continental supply chains for pharmaceutical manufacturing is essential 
for Africa's future health security. Finally, Africa should speak with one voice on the importance of global vaccine equity, both now and in the future. We very much look forward to attending the next edition of the Aswan Forum in person. Once again, I thank President Sisi for the invitation to address you. I wish you fruitful deliberations and thank you for your attention. Monsieur le Président de la République arabe d'Égypte, Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, Mesdames et Messieurs les représentants des organisations internationales, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais, en l'entame de mon propos, remercier notre frère, M. Abdel Fattah El-Sisi, président de la République arabe d'Égypte, qui a bien voulu nous convier à prendre part à cette deuxième édition du Forum d'Assouan pour la paix et le développement durable sur le thème « Façonner la nouvelle normalité de l'Afrique, récupérer plus fort, reconstruire en mieux ». Je suis particulièrement honoré de participer à ces importantes assises. Je suis convaincu qu'elles nous permettront, à la suite des résolutions du premier forum d'Assouan, dont les travaux sont tenus du 12 au 14 décembre 2019 à Assouan, de mettre l'accent sur la nécessité d'accélérer le changement de paradigme de la gestion des crises à la prévention des conflits sur notre continent. L'objectif visé est résolument de renforcer la résilience dans nos stratégies de réponse aux défis de paix, de sécurité et de développement durable dans un monde post-pandémie COVID-19. Il n'est nullement besoin post-pandémie COVID-19. Il n'est nullement besoin de rappeler que la pandémie du virus impacte nos économies est, à mon sens, par conséquent impérieux que des solutions soient envisagées et des stratégies de riposte mises en place pour freiner et contrer l'évolution de cette pandémie et envisager des modalités d'une reprise adéquate. Monsieur le Président de la République, Dès l'apparition de cette pandémie, notre réaction a été immédiate pour lutter contre sa propagation et limiter son impact sur les plans économiques et social. Toutefois, malgré une forte mobilisation de nos États, vous conviendrez avec moi que les effets de cette pandémie ont considérablement impacté le mode de vie de nos populations et déstructurer les économies de nos États, freinant ainsi nos progrès vers la réalisation des agendas 2063 de l'Union africaine et 2030 des Nations unies. Si cette crise sanitaire perdure, elle affectera à moyen et long terme la situation économique de nos États et augmentera leur fragilité face aux menaces complexes auquel notre continent est confronté, notamment les défis sécuritaires. Sur ce plan, en effet, nos efforts pour faire taire efficacement les armes sont régulièrement freinés par la résurgence des attaques terroristes, la fréquence et l'ampleur des conflits, ainsi que l'augmentation des foyers de tension sur le continent. Face à cette situation, nous devons à nouveau redoubler d'efforts et de vigilance, renforcer notre capacité de résilience afin de récupérer plus fort et reconstruire en mieux nos États. Pour cela, il est important de renforcer la gouvernance inclusive, les systèmes de santé et in fine 
accélérer le développement durable. C'est ainsi que nous pourrons faire progresser nos programmes ambitieux pour l'Afrique post-Covid-19. Je vous remercie. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me start my remarks with a word of thanks to His Excellency General Abdel Fattah Al Sisi, President of the Sisterly Arab Republic of, of Egypt, for inviting me to participate in this important forum. In South Sudan, we are keenly aware that, our, that we are not living in normal times. And this keen awareness allow us to appreciate our participation in forums like this. We see this forum as a suitable platform for us to reach out to our regional اهلا بكم مشاهدينا نتابع معكم هذه التغطيه الخاصه من شاشه التلفزيون